Hi everyone and uh, welcome to this uh, new series that we are starting on the YouTube channel and that is life cycle of the day and I know how all of you are extremely stressed out about all the parasitology and virology life cycles that you are burdened with so in order to simplify that and make life a little simple for you I've started with a short series of maximum 10 to 15 minutes on a daily basis where we are going to discuss one life cycle. So that's not burdening you with too much of information because it all ends up getting jumbled up. Just one life cycle a day and think in the long run, think at the outcome. At the end of the month, you'll be done with the life cycles. So that is the plan for the month of March. And for example, today I've picked up the organism. It's a trematode, it's a fluke and that is Paragonimus. Vestimony. Before I begin, how have I planned the entire day for you? I've not kept any lengthy sessions throughout the day, only short sessions to give you that essential push or a kickstart that you need at different time spans. So, beginning in the morning, early morning, there's a kickstart morning session where we've completed 54 days of that. We are on the 55th day tomorrow morning, where we have particular topics which we discuss after mutual, uh, you know, we discuss it out each morning on what do the students need so currently the need of the hour is definitely lengthy questions which we are going to do on alternate days and apart from that we have bacteriology sessions on the other days apart from that this is the morning 7 45 session the kickstart morning then afternoon which again gets you a little drowsy that extra push that you need so there's a 4 30 p.m session exactly of 45 minutes which is again the topics are in front of you you can see till 15th March, you'll be done with general path. These are again available on the Unacademy app. And then for 15 minutes on the YouTube channel each day at 8, 10 p.m. So that's your plan of action. So you see no lengthy class, a 45 minute class in the morning to get you started off, 45 minute in the afternoon to give you that push that you need midday. And a 15 minute, say a dinner time class where you just have to hear one life cycle. I think it's a pretty fair deal. Let's start with the life cycle of the day and that's Paragonimus vestimony. You know it's a trematode, you know it's a fluke but I call it a lung fluke which makes your first mnemonic of the day. Paragonimus is that fluke or that trematode which has P for P, pulmonary involvement. So sputum examination is going to be very important over here. Let me show you how the life cycle looks like. Well, this is how the life cycle looks like. We are going to first, I'm going to tell you the hint to crack any life cycle. You have to pick up the hosts that you're seeing. Over here, what are the hosts that you see? Over here, clearly, I see number one, there is a human. I see number two, there is a snail. And number three, there's a crayfish or a crab. So these are the three hosts. It's a three host life cycle. Let us split up the life cycle. Number one, the definitive host, human. For paragonimus vestimony, definitive host is human. So how do humans get the infection? Whenever humans consume, whenever humans consume any undercooked or inadequately cooked crab or crayfish is how they get the infection. So undercooked crab or crayfish consumption, ingestion, eating. And which form do they get? They get the metasarcaria larva of paragonimus vestimony. The metasarcaria form is ingested. Please learn it because that is going to be common for all the trematode cycles. All the trematode cycles, if I ask you the infective form, it is going to be the metasarcaria larva except for schistosoma because everything in schistosoma has the word letter s so the sound of s reminds you of the cercaria larva and please remember schistosomes infective form is cercaria larva rest all the trematodes it's metacercaria larva so metacercaria larva enters the gi tract as you see it is going to exist in the duodenum after existing in the duodenum it is going to come up because uh, it's going to pierce the wall it's going to pierce the wall of the intestine pierce the cavity the diaphragm and reach the lungs so it's going to pierce the wall reach the lungs in the lungs obviously lung involvement means patient is going to start complaining of sputum so he might cough up sputum when the patient cuffs up sputum he can always swallow it back patient can always swallow it back which means again the organism has reached the intestine 
cuff up the sputum, swallow the sputum, again the organism reaches the intestine which means now the organism can be passed in the form of eggs in the stool sample. So yes, what comes out in the stool sample? Stool sample will show you what? Unembryonated eggs. In the environment, these unembryonated eggs change into embryonated eggs. Now, if I'm saying embryonated, something's going to come out of that egg. What is going to come out of that egg? Miracidia hatches out. Now, I'm going to tell you a mnemonic. The mnemonic is MCRC. You have to follow this for all the trematodes. Remember, the mnemonic is MCRC. So, what do I mean by that? So, please remember, the first one that is going to come out is Miracidia. We'll repeat. The first thing that hatches out of the egg is the Miracidia that goes into the first intermediate host and that is the snail. So the first form that comes out of the egg goes into the first intermediate host that is the snail and in the snail there is sporocyst, then redia, then circaria larva. So remember what was the first form that came out of the snail uh, that came out of the egg? Miracidia M. It goes into the snail and then what in the snail? So I told you after it's M C R C. So M is Miracidia and what in the snail? Cyst, Redia, Circaria. Cyst, Redia, Circaria. So M, M, C, R, C. That's a common thing you learn for the trematodes. A lot of trematodes go by that way. Miracidia, cyst, redia, circaria. This circaria larva will now go into the second intermediate host. This circaria larva now goes into the second intermediate host, which all of you know is the crab or the crayfish, the one that we are going to eat. In the crab or the crayfish, this circaria larva changes into metasircaria larva. This metasircaria larva is finally what you're going to eat. I hope that is clear. Obviously, it needs some revision. So exactly what we are going to get back to. This is the entire life cycle. And I told you the first thing that you have to do, you have to pick up the host. So number one, you had a human and this human was eating, was eating an infected or inadequately cooked cray, uh, crayfish or crab which had which form? Metacircaria form. That form went into the duodenum, pierced out, went into the lungs, patient cuffed up sputum, swallowed it, went in the intestine and eggs are out. These eggs embryonate and what is the timeline going to be like? First thing, Miracidia hatches out, goes into the first intermediate host, snail. Thereafter, CRC, that is cyst, redia, circaria larva are formed. Circaria larva goes into the crab or the crayfish, changes into metacircaria larva and that is what we consume. So clearly, where all will I be able to see the diagnostic form or the eggs? Number one in the stool sample and number two in the sputum sample also because P for P. Paragonimus vestimini shows me pulmonary involvement. Well, how else can you get the life cycle? So see, this is an unlabeled life cycle. If you had to pick this up in the exam, quite easy. You see there's a human, you see there's a snail and you see there's a crab. See, picking up the host is so essential. And all the form that you're seeing, you're seeing egg has come out from the human. There it has gone. Something has hatched out of that egg, gone into the snail, then to the crab, back to the human. Paragonimus. Let's see another one. Here again, I see a human, I see a snail and I see a crab. Again, the only form that I'm seeing, egg coming out, multiple forms are forming over here, back to the human. Another one, again, this is another way of how different pictorial representations. You see the human, you see the snail, you see the crab, paragonimus vestimini. So no analysis is complete without solving an MCQ. If I get an MCQ which says, which of the following organisms can be identified by eggs present in the stool as well as the sputum sample? I look at the options. I've got all flukes or trematodes in front of me. The intestinal fluke, the liver fluke, the lung fluke, the bladder fluke, so a blood fluke. So we have schistosoma hematobium, paragonimus vestimini. Buscae, Hepatica, which in the stool and the sputum, I think you know this, Paragonimus vestimini, P for P, pulmonary involvement. Well, another question. 
before teaching you the question. That question will actually teach you the clinical aspect also and the egg that I'm talking about. So what is this egg that I'm talking about again and again? That's there in the stool and the sputum. Look at this. It's a beautiful golden brown egg that you have. It's a pigment that it has. It's a golden brown egg and you can see a lid on the top. So you call it an operculated egg. You call it an operculated egg with a golden brown color. And this is what you're going to see in the stool and the sputum samples. So can, you, can I say that the sputum sample is going to have this golden flex in between? Why that golden flex? Why that golden tinge? Because of the golden brown eggs that are coming out. Read the history. Let me know the answer. Okay, so here you have a question. Let's read it together. 23-year-old male patient presented with diarrhea and abdominal pain. What is your hint? Intestinal involvement. This was followed by fever and fatigue. Initially, he says dry cuff. Later on, he says it's become productive with rusty color and golden yellow flecks in between. Sputum cytology shows the following image. The egg is also given, the egg with the lid, the golden egg. Golden yellow flecks with the golden lid egg. They want you to find out the incorrect statement. Let us read. So you need to tell me a true and false now. Definitive host is man. I think this is true. Yeah, yes. Only intermediate host is snail. Well, this was the incorrect statement. Definitive host is definitely man. Only intermediate host is snail. Well, no. There are two intermediate hosts. One is the snail and one is the crab. Okay. Passage of eggs can be seen in stool and sputum. It's a true statement. Can it be confused with TB? Yes. In our country, productive cuff with fever and fatigue can any day be confused with TB. But obviously here, it was the egg given. So here I could not have confused it. But clinically, can you confuse it? Yes, you can. So a quick recap. See, the game changer in the trematodes will always be this second intermediate host. I'll tell you how. In all the trematodes, definitive host will always be the man. In all the trematodes, the first intermediate host will always be the snail. So be it schistosoma, fasciola, paragonimus, everywhere definitive host is man and first intermediate host is snail. Second intermediate host is the game changer. So in paragonimus vestimony, it is crab or crayfish. In paragonimus vestimony, it is crab or crayfish. So I'll give you different, different mnemonics to learn. Yesterday, I was talking about schistosomes. So S for S. Schistosome has an S. So the only intermediate host is snail. There is no second intermediate host. In schistosomes, only snail is the intermediate host. After man, snail and over. In um, Clonorchis, which I'll be teaching you in the coming days, Clonorchis, we learn it as Clonorfish. So, man will be there, snail will be there, and then there's going to be fish present as the second intermediate host. When I say Paragonimus, para cara. So, Paragonimus is going to be Caragonimus. So, it's going to be crab, cara, crab, or crayfish that's the second intermediate host so the game changer is the second one okay man and snail will always be there well this simple outline gives you a finish to the paragonimus vestimony pulmonary fluke liver fluke uh, lung fluke uh, trematode that is over so similarly tomorrow again at 8 10 pm i'm going to come with a short life cycle finish it off practice an mcq and this way as i see the outcome by the end of this month you'll be done with your life cycles so that is it from my side and before i end the session just telling all especially the fmg students about the focus batch for FMG 2021 which has um, uh, started from 1st of March that is yesterday this spans up till 30th of May and I will be conducting um, you know classes for micro and path and you can see the uh, schedule in front of you you can log into the app it is available you can always download the app you'll have to take subscription so whatever suits you as per your plan and your preparation go in for the same and certainly it'll give you an extra edge in your preparation right so hoping to see you all on the platform from my side as far as the special free classes are concerned 
45 minutes in the morning, 45 minutes in the evening, both of which are on the Unacademy app and a 10 to 15 minute life cycle on YouTube every day at 8, 10 p.m. I hope you are benefiting from this series and do let me know about your feedback, guys. Let me know if you want any other life cycle apart from the ones that I've already told you. If you want any others that should be covered, uh, I would certainly bring that up, right? Have a great day. Thanks for joining in.